So I'm going to do a quick video on this. There'll be some bits that I spliced in of when it was being transported and when it was running. And then I will try and update as I go along. Um, it's not quite as bad as it looks, thankfully. There's a lot of work to do. Put AC from the factory, a 10 speed box with a high low reduction. Um, first things first though, before I can use it, swap out the brake pedal valve because it is stuck solid. Luckily, stand part can get it real easy. Uh, I think they're about $160 for the complete pedal assembly. And then mileage or kilometers. It's only doing 100 and, well, I guess 157,000. Um, but it's had two engines. So the new one, don't know how many that's got on it, probably only around 50k, if that. The back is horrid. The passenger seat is horrid. But the bulk of the fiberglass is in good shape. The air seat still works on the driver's side. And yeah, that's the control panel for the concrete hammer. Um, start stop the Deutz to. Um, the Deutz air cooled and then I think that up and down for the um, for the actual bed itself and then for the guillotine. Don't know what those switches on the end do because they're all rusted out. Um, but I can see see lights, wiper, etc. And the brake saver and the retarder, which is going to be one of these two levers for manual use. Don't know which, not worked it out. And then there's the diff lock switch up there, plus low air, little dangly thing. And uh, export only. So as an overview, very crusty in places. Um, fuel tank's been leaking. It's stopped now because 
think we filled it up to about there and then it used fuel obviously getting it on and off the trailer and it stopped leaking um, it's just a little bodge job to get the batteries on it so it can be moved I've been hunting for wheels and tires because luckily it turns out these trilexes those are adapters onto the standard Kenworth hub and that's a 10 on 285 or 11 and a quarter inch PCD um, these have obviously snapped at some point so I will need to replace one, two, three, four, five wheel studs on this side. All the others seem to be all right. It was specced with factory disc brakes, but for some reason it's got drums up front. So I've got the uh, complete bomb now um, of everything that, uh, of all the parts that went into building this. Rears are the same setup. Trilex adapters onto the 10 stud hubs. These are hub pilot, so I'll be able to um, be able to swap these out hopefully for some standard 22 and a half inch wheels. At which point tires become a hell of a lot cheaper because um, these are like I know mean, these are like $500 a tire in this size or in the UK they're like I would quote around £435 a tire. Then you need tubes on top of that and fitting. All of them are the all of these tires just dry rotted. Big Hendrix and rear uh, walking beam with twin rock wells. I'll go around the other side. Um, this is the concrete hammer. Mountain points and and shafts are just massive. Has got air ride on it to level the truck out when it's doing concrete braking. Uh, all the bags obviously need replacing. All the brake chambers want replacing. But it's uh, yeah, it's a 1981 truck, so a lot of this is still original from when it was uh, sent out to Saudi Arabia. get in here a bit better and see the big rock walls. Deutsch six cylinder air cooled and um, this runs all the hydraulics for this because whilst that has got a PTO takeoff on the 10 speed and the 2 speed transfer um, it'll always be running at the wrong speed to drive the pump at a constant volume so that's that big hydraulic tank and some idiot stole this truck back in oh, I can't remember what he told me back in the early 90s I think it was and they tried to move it started the wrong engine this one and sent the 15 ton slab of steel that sits in there back into the cab which is why it's all dented and um, got to walk around the other side you can see the dent better but here's the 15 ton slab again so this whole thing en it was en50 and then hard faced um with these castellations this breaks up the concrete when it's dropped lifts up on that ram this whole thing slides up inside the casing and then drops down under gravity. And it's just massive. Um, yeah, you see a bit of the denting up there. And then, there we go. Big dent. So all this needs to be panel beaten in. I'm going to start off by removing the sleeper. Um, and then I'll, I'll beat the sleeper straight, leave it off, beat the back of the cab out whilst it's still on the frame so it's nice and rigid and then I'll pull the pull the cab off the frame and start the repair work luckily the chassis is all good 
so not a huge amount to do there. A little crusty in places where it's double skinned, but I'm not worried about that. I'll, when the cab's off, I'll wire brush everything, paint it, underseal it, replace all the air lines. Because the first job before I can actually move this down to my workshop is to replace the brake pedal as the valve is stuck. Um, not a hard job really, and the parts are readily available, which is nice. I think I, I mentioned that earlier anyway. I'm going to pause the recording and climb up, take a look under the hood. You can still see the, that's the old Zaheer, um, Zaheed Hina logo from when this truck was new and uh, back in 81 it was working in Saudi Arabia. I'm trying to find the photo when it derailed a train actually, so if anyone for some reason has the photo when it derailed a train in Saudi Arabia, I would love to see it. So, can't open the hood too far, and I've got to watch where I step, because there's no fender there. Gonna kneel down, take a look inside. See, all the steel firewalls rotted out, but luckily, the main structure in this cab fiberglass being a Kenworth so I've got all all the hard shapes are there I've just got to do these flat panels really and a lot of them are really easy um, so once the cab's off this will be what I'll be cracking on with I've still got to do my auto car cab as well I've not really posted any updates on that because I've been busy um, but I will throw some photos of what I've been doing recently into the end of this video and I mean, I've, I've done quite a bit of work to the cab on that made a whole lot of new panels, started to stretch it out and really it needs the roof, the door skins and then the rear panel making um, and then it can go back on the truck and I can start to plumb everything back in so yeah, um, anyway, firewall, totally rotted through. You can see at the bottom, it's gone through into the cab, that bit of light shining through. Big turbo here on this 3408. Uh, so it's an industrial 3408 apparently. Well, actually it says industrial on the, on the data plate on the other side, so it's not, um, not an apparently, it's an industrial. The previous owner said it had been taken out somehow to 21 litres, I'm not sure how, maybe something to do with the internals, Zahid Hino was um, the biggest cat dealer back in the 80s as far as I'm aware, and they, yeah, so they had access to a lot of cat stuff, funky stuff, but this engine, low hours, low mileage, because it, it left the it left the factory with three four oh eight. It got retrofitted with the three is it three four one two or three five one two V twelve. And then when it came back to the UK after it was sold, it was fitted with the three four oh eight again. Um, because I believe the I believe the V twelve cap that was in it was making some ridiculous horsepower figure because this was being used as heavy haul moving you know moving multiple dozers at a time or buildings or whatever the hell it was i've got some photos of it in use i'll throw them up as well and there's one of the guys stood next to this who makes this look like a regular sized truck so i've got no idea how big he was but probably probably touching seven foot he he makes this truck look like a regular Kenworth like, or a regular Pete 359 just like it makes it look like a small truck um, yeah obviously the hood I am gonna have to build a new one probably not gonna make it a three-piece hood we'll do a two-piece um, out of alley and then the sides I'm not sure, I might leave the sides open, polish the rockers, and then you can see the engine. Because these are just flat plate and they're kind of boring. Whereas I can make some little brackets that come down, mount here, one on the back of the cab, and lock this down. 
um, or just some hood pins through this steel section here and through the steel sections out the back uh, at which point it's just a nice custom you know, nice bit of custom touch uh, what else we got going on well, that's about it really there's a leak coming from somewhere I've already found one of the leaks uh, there's a coolant leak on the pipe that runs under the exhaust manifold on the passenger side I don't know what it's called some sort of link pipe I assume it's well I assume it's just something to do with coolant circulation to avoid hot spots and I'm guessing the other one is either the bottom radiator hose or the bottom radiator gasket one of the two because my auto car has got the same sort of setup three piece radiator and it leaked from the exact same spot um, and I will make my way over to the other side of the truck now so factory AC unit for Saudi gonna have to remake that um, that fiberglass scoop I'll probably make it out of alley just so it's nice gonna keep the watermelon style markers lose the two flashing beacons there put air horns on and put a flashing beacon bar on top of the alley um, the alley intake under here so 3408 450 horsepower I believe that's been messed with slightly and it produces us a little bit more than three uh, than 450 um, other than that coming from this side I see the sticker up there can't quite get to it but it's uh, a bit faded I'm gonna have to see if I can get a reproduction from the factory as I've been speaking to someone in Heritage over there and they've been you know very helpful uh, but yes better view of the hole through the firewall um, we will lose the heater matrix that will get relocated uh, and I will probably put a, a little diesel heater in the back uh, just in the sleeper cab all oh, this will want changing out so new injector lines remove the intake top hat give it a clean so clean the valley out because that's full of uh, Full of bits of hood. Well, yeah, nice big project. Didn't need it, but here it is.